This is the Change the Map podcast, where we inspire, educate, and resource you to transform the Buddhist world through prayer and action. Join us as we explore the mystical world of Buddhism, discover its unique challenges, meet Buddhist background followers of Jesus, and engage in strategic prayer to change the spiritual map of the Buddhist world. This week, we're joined by Dwight Martin, a veteran cross-cultural worker in Thailand and founder of the E-Star Foundation. On today's episode, Dwight shares about the unprecedented church planting movement in central Thailand, how lives and villages are being impacted, and ways that we can pray for movements like this around the Buddhist world. Welcome to the Change the Map podcast. I'm your host, Mark, founder of Change the Map, and we are on the road. This is not Josh for the first time. I think Josh is not available. We're on the road in northern Thailand, and uh, so you can see we're not in our normal studios, but we welcome you all to the podcast. If this is your first time, we encourage you to subscribe and like, and you'll get all of our new content, and uh, so I'm excited about our guest today up in Northern Thailand. Dwight Martin is an old friend. In fact, we were buddies working together for, for some time before we realized that uh, we we're actually shirt tail relatives. That's right, so, that's right. Uh, Dwight, the story we're gonna talk about today, I'm just so thrilled about something that's happening in the Buddhist world in central Thailand that is unprecedented. And so I'm excited to hear about that. I know it's going to inspire our, our listeners. So well, I'm happy to be here. Good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, you, you, you say you're a Thai person, but you don't really look Thai. Tell us about that. Well, um, I, my parents came to Thailand by ship in 1948. Wow. So they're one of those early, early missionaries up in northeast Thailand. They were the first missionaries in the Kampanom, right on the Lao border. And that's where I was born, out there in the middle of the boonies of Thailand. And mm. so I grew up in an area where there was no, no, no white people. I grew up with Thais. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I was, I was in Thailand until I was 17, actually. And then I went to the United States cause I, okay. for high school. Okay. And that, not high school, excuse me, for college. College, yeah. And I was there and, uh, you know, got my, my bachelor's degrees, my master's degree. Life was good. Mm-hmm. Had, had my own business. Mm-hmm. It was doing really good. And uh, then the Lord, uh, I took my family to Thailand because I wanted my kids to understand why dad uh, doesn't feel quite American, you know, he feels more Thai. And and when I came to Thailand, the Lord told me to sell everything I had in the United States, sell my business, sell my my house, my my car. And uh, thank goodness my wife was willing to follow. And I came back to Thailand back in 20 years ago, or not 20, uh, about 18 years ago. Yeah, that's when we met. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then uh, what did you do when you got here? What, what did you do? Well, you know, the only thing I can say that I did is I said yes to God to sell everything. But when I came to Thailand, what I was really surprised, I met the leaders of the Thai church, mm-hmm. and they said, oh, Reverend Martin has come back this ooh, time. You know, so they, knew my, they were, they were young folks. My parents were here. Yeah. And uh, so they knew my parents because my parents were into literature. And they said, oh, Reverend Martin has come back, but this time he's an, a computer guy. <laughs> Change the persona. And they said... We are blind. We do not know where the churches are in Thailand. Can you help us collect all the data on the Thai church and where the churches are and where the churches are not? And that's what I did. And so that's, that's how I got here. Was I, all I said was yes to God, and the, the rest of my path was all the Lord had all worked out for me. And you are famous in the Thai church. I'll just have to say that, uh, being one of the workers here, you're famous in the, throughout the nation, really, for the statistics guy. I mean, you've put together these interactive maps and all that stuff, but, but that's not why we're here today. Right. Something crazy, uh, God, you know, and a God event happened in 2016. Can you tell us, can you tell us about that? That's what, that's what I'm Well, uh, so in 2016, what happened? So I asked the, the date on the Thai church. I mean, I, I, I saw the map, and I saw that the map wasn't changing. Talking about your change the map, okay? Yes, you're the perfect guest. (laughs) (laughs) And it wasn't changing. But what happened in 2006, several significant events happened in 2016. One was um, the leader of the national plan was a good friend of mine and a good friend of yours. Mm -hmm. And he died suddenly at the age of 59. And I was, like, heartbroken. What am I going to do? Just like many, many Thai pastors and leaders were... And I, what am I going to do? So that was the one thing that was very significant about that year. But for me then, what that drove me to do is what am I going to do from now on? Because he, he and I, as you know, went all around the country, and that's how I got right. really well known in that regard. Right. 
But I, uh, I took the data down to the village level in Thailand. Right. And so right. I had all the data at the district, sub-district level, but I'd never taken it down. How to many village. villages are there in Thailand? Well, there's, there's about 84,000 villages. <laughs> See, the guy knows. <laughs> so, um, and what I was shocked mm-hmm. was only four, well, actually 5% of the villages that heard the gospel. Wow. wow. Okay. I was like, the gospel has been here close to 200 years and all yeah. the churches are in only 5% of the villages. Wow. And uh, 95% of the people in Thailand had never heard of Jesus. Mm. And why, why I brought it down to the village level, actually, is I read Mark 138, where Jesus said, let us go to the next village and share the gospel there. And then I, I highlight, because th- that is the reason why I came. Wow. Most people read wow. past Mark 138. Did Jesus' heart was for the villages. Wow. He sent the disciples out to the villages. Yeah. And, he, and so I go, well, I need to know what the village thing is. Yeah. And so that was one of the major events that happened in my life is like, you know, the village level. And so when you started paying attention to the villages, what brought you to this, this, this movement that's taking place? Well, so then as the research coordinator, I had my fingers on the, the country of Thailand. I knew what denominations were here and all that. And I'm like, I wonder if there's just any one group here in Thailand that is interested in just the villages. Yeah. And so I started seeking and I found a small group out in central Thailand in Pechabun. And I heard about them. And so I went down to visit them. Okay, and what were they doing? Well, so what I found out about them is the same the year 2016. They had a same heart. Okay, they themselves started from a house church. Okay. But he had eight, he had eight, eight churches by that time when I'd been him. Okay, okay. He, so he'd okay. been around for 30 years. Okay. They're, they're a family that actually came to know the Lord from, he was a motorcycle mechanic. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was desperate for money. And so he goes, well, I'm going to go 120 kilometers to go visit my mother-in-law, who was a Christian, and uh, they weren't, but we're going to ask for money for them. She gets to the place where sh- she was at, and she was at a church service. Mm-hmm. So they mm-hmm. had to wait till the church service was over. So mom was a Christian then? Well, uh, childhood Christian. You know, okay. she, she wouldn't say she was a follower mm-hmm. of Christ. Maybe nominal. Nominal, yeah. yeah. And so... They weren't li- living the life of the Lord. Gotcha. But so they went to this church service, and they weren't interested in the church service. But then they heard the pastor say at the end, if anybody has any problems with spirits, come forward. Anybody who has problems with family, come forward. And no, that didn't interest them. But then they said, if anybody has a problem in life and doesn't know where to turn, come mm-hmm. forward. Mm-hmm. And it's like the Holy Spirit struck them, and they came running forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and that's when they said they gave their life to the Lord in their early 20s. Wow. And so then they... They just went home 120 kilometers on a motorcycle on bad roads back in those days. That's a long way. And uh, they were just rejoicing. And then they came back to where they were, and they go, well, there's nothing here. No church, no nothing. What are we going to do? So they started studying God's Word together at 4 o'clock in the morning and just doing what God's Word and started a house Mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. So that was back in the early 80s. Okay. Now push forward to 2016. Right. He now has a vision to plant have 10,000 believers in 1,000 churches. <laughs> he didn't know how he was going to do this. Okay. He already had that in 2016. He had the vision. Okay. He had the vision, but he had no idea how he was going but to do it. But it started with the, with the king's death, well, right? I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'm, I'm getting ahead of you. Uh, you're getting ahead of me. Right. So what happened was, well, <clears throat> we're going to have a big evangelistic service. Okay. He's a great evangelist. We'll right. have 2,500 people. And this is a vision of 2020, a four-year vision, every year. And then we'll somehow start, start churches from that. Okay. But, you know, the very first year, the king died. Right. And as you know, you were here. The king died. And you weren't allowed to have big celebrations. Right. I mean, and everyone had to wear black for three months. That for, and then everyone wore black for a year, I think. I, my, or even my more. Black, I don't or know. Even more, yeah. My black wardrobe just super expanded. That's right. Time. Yeah. And so because they couldn't do it, they go, what are they going to do? We can't have a big cel- yeah. evangelistic service. So what they did, they said, well, instead of them having come to us, we'll go to them. Okay. And that's when they also said, oh, they started 17 house churches in that December. Wow. And like, wow. this is the way to do it. We got to go to them. Wow. And, and that's expanded to crazy. Crazy. I mean, I'll share you some yeah. statistics. Yeah. But so that's, that's how it started. And so I heard about it as me as looking for, uh, is there anybody doing the churches? I, that was in December. In February, I'd heard about them. And I went down to visit them. And I just asked all sorts of questions. Okay. And that's how we kind of joined together. Okay, so was he a missiologist? Was, was, how, how did this guy, <laughs> what, you know, <laughs> one of the things that uh, workers, cross-culture workers, want is to see these, these movements take place. And so, uh, so uh, <laughs> he was we, we a missiologist <laughs> in this regard in that he, uh, he knew how to reach Thai people. But right. he, he, you wouldn't have called him a missiologist. He just knew because he was Thai himself. Right. He, he just knew 
how to share the gospel that would uh, sure. would change the Thai heart. Sure. He knew he knew what they're looking for. In other words, he wasn't bringing an outside a uh, wet methodology, but he knew how to reach a Thai person. Yeah, yeah. And so that's how. So how did he do it? Well, so uh, seventeen villages. How did that happen? Seventeen, or how did? How does the growth happen? Well, so so earlier we've we've morphed a lot over the years. Okay, I mean, okay. Um, so one of the things when I first went down there and understood what he did is he did not bring, um, he brought a message of you have a problem in life, Jesus can help you. Okay, okay, understand as you know, Thai people are not they're uh, they're they're very into you honor shame and fear. Yes. Right. And yes. so when you say somebody, uh, maybe a traditional way is to say, well, you know, you're, you got a sin problem that that's going to shame somebody right. in Thailand. And so they're, right. they're going to shut you off. But you say you got a problem in life. Jesus will help you. OK. OK. And so you tell better about approach. a better approach now. Um, and so they're like they've been looking for the real God. Mm. They've been looking for the true God. Mm. And so when you say Jesus is God, he's the true God. He's the God that can provide save you. Mm. They're, they're listening. Okay. 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 But now, right away from there, you will take, within the discipleship process, because the key is, what, is, what does the Great Commission say? Go and make disciples. disciples. Not say go and evangelize. Right. Okay, so make a disciple. So what I just shared is the evangelism event. Okay. Okay, you don't stop there. Okay. You go back and you disciple them. Okay, so what, what was this about 48 hours? So uh, you go back. Right away right away and go to their house and start discipling. Yeah, so the very first discipleship lesson, actually, right. is you've heard about this Jesus. You may have prayed. To, you've probably prayed to believe in this Jesus, okay? And the Holy Spirit starts to work in your heart. Then you get him to pray. Okay, you've heard about this Jesus. He's the true God. He's the God you've been looking for. Okay. And now pray to him. Start a okay. relationship with Jesus. Okay. Okay. okay, and that I've seen miracles happen at so that time. So these are people know nothing about, very they, little they, about God, very little about Christianity. Well, they know about gods and gods, a, gods okay, and God, <laughs> okay. but they have never. Most of them have never heard of the word Jesus even. Okay, wow. okay. Wow. They, I mean, that's one of the things that was startling to me. They okay. have never even heard the name Jesus. Nobody's gone to them in over two thousand years since Jesus ascended. Wow. Anyway. So they have to teach them how to pray to Jesus. Yeah, and we have simple prayers. Okay, simple prayers. But the key I want to get to is once they know about Jesus, they're praying to Jesus. Within a, a week, we're saying, now, who is this Jesus? Okay. And now this is where you kind of bring in the creation story. Well, Jesus is the creator. He created mankind. Okay. Okay. And, but, but there was a separation. They were disobeyed. Okay. Okay. And your, your problems in life that you're struggling with are a result of your sin. Wow. Okay, so that's where that comes in. Okay. And then Jesus came to this world to solve the problem of sin. No, I was told that uh, they teach him how to pray and, and choose that, that first meeting they teach him how to pray. You choose three needs in your life and ask Jesus to touch you over the next week, and then you come back and, and ask him what happened. Now, what happens when, the, when, when they do that? Well, so it, it, I don't want to get the point that everybody gets a prayer answered like they wanted. Okay, don't, okay. that's okay. not... They get the prayer answered. In fact, what, what I've discovered as a, as a researcher, I discovered there is some sort of flame or some sort of peace or joy when they pray to believe in Jesus that happens in their heart. Mm. But some people will ask for different things, okay? And, and it's almost like, wow, you can't ask Jesus for things. But, but most of it is there's a healing. Some, you know, I've seen people that couldn't walk, walk. And I've seen, you know, there's healings that do take place, um, miracles that do take place. But I, want, I don't want to think, well, that's the main thing that happens. Okay. The biggest miracle is that people have a changed heart of some sort. Sword. Okay. But okay. miracles, uh, you know, <laughs> physical miracles do take place as well. Uh, and so did it work? I mean, so they went from 17 churches to what? Yeah, give us a little progression. Okay, here. so so I joined them in February of 2017. This happened in okay. December, and I went down there, and I understand I had my old ways of thinking things. Okay, so I had talked with them a long time, and what do you do differently? What do you do differently? One of the big things I discovered is the language we use in our, our evangelism events. Okay. Can I give an example about that, sure, what happened sure. in my life? Sure. So I went out there, and they said, well, Dwight, you know, you, you speak good Thai. You get in front of this village and, and share Jesus with them. I, mm -hmm. So I did the typical missionary thing. I gave the mm -hmm. creation story. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next time I went up there, and I say, like, John 3.16. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, you, you've been there, done that, right? Yep, sure and have. then the third time I talked about my family coming as missionaries. Okay. Mm -hmm. That evening, some, uh, the pastor's wife said to me, she goes, Dwight, I know I'm a country pastor's wife, and you're this pastor that's well-known here in Thailand, but i got to tell you something. Um, what you spoke to those villagers, they didn't understand a word you said. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. That's humbling. <laughs> well, it was humbling, but I, I, was, I was okay. I said, so what did I do wrong? They said, Dwight, 
you are so used to speaking in churches and Christians, you spoke like you're talking to Christians. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand your Christianese. They didn't understand your language. Really? We have Christianese? Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll give you an example of that. I, I, yeah, I know. I'm tongue in cheek here. No, yeah. but you're right. No, but you're exactly yeah. right. Yeah. So what happened is that the next time I go, and the next day I get in front of the village, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll talk about my family, because that's what she said, talk about. Mm -hmm. So I said, friends, today I want to give you my testimony. Okay. How my parents came to Thailand 72 years ago as missionaries mm -hmm. to tell Thai people about the love of God. Yeah. And then I went on from there. Yeah. And I get down, she goes, Dwight, that still didn't work. And I go, but I did what you told me to do. And she said, well, Dwight, first of all, the word testimony. Yeah. That's a word we Christians use all the time. We yeah. understand it. It's okay in church, but to them it's a court word. Yeah. So why, why are you giving me a testimony? Did I do something wrong? Okay. So it turns yeah. them off. Yeah. And what's a missionary? Yeah. Okay, we use the word missionary, you know. Yeah. And they don't understand that. What is it, like a, a CIA spy? Yeah. <laughs> And which God are you going to tell me about? Sure. Okay, so finally I said, I get it. And the next time I get up, I said, friends, today I want to tell you my life story, how my parents came to Thailand 72 years ago to tell Thai people about the love of Jesus. Mm. Let me tell you how Jesus is. Mm. So you see those words that we use sure. that we're not even aware? Sure. That's one of the things they taught me. Sure. Keep it's it. just the language we use. Okay, okay. So tell us about the growth. Well, so, so as we've been there, I mean, I... Uh, we collect really detailed information. Yeah. So I even got the GPS coordinates of every believer. Wow. Okay. And so we actually literally go down to every village, every road, sharing Jesus. Okay. okay. I mean, okay. literally, Thai people are waiting to hear about us. We just mm. got to go to them. There's people mm. of peace, as, we, as the scripture says, everywhere. So I've got the data in front of me. That's why I've got my computer open here. So in the year 2017, that first year, we had 110 house churches. That, which is a lot. I which mean, is a lot you know, in Thailand. When you look at the history of the growth of the church, that's a lot. They did go out. That's they did well. But one of the things that we do that's a little bit different is it's not just house churches, because every time we reached a complete district, in your context, it'd be like a county, mm -hmm. and we got to every village in a county or mm -hmm. a district, we will start a district church to continue to disciple and, and grow the house churches. So we started three district churches that year as well. Wow. 110 house wow. churches and three district wow. churches. Wow, wow. And then we moved up to 2018, 266 okay. more, Wow. two more district churches. And then all the way, I mean, I can go every year, 2021, yes. um, we did something that's never been done before in Thailand. But so far, and since 2017 to 2022, we've started over 2,817 wow. churches. And that doesn't even include this year. Okay. Okay. And we've started 17 district churches in that time. Okay. So... Uh, and, and mass baptisms. I mean, you started gaining some attention throughout the country with, with those. Uh, it was incredible. So, so a lot of people ask why we do mass baptisms and things like that. But to understand, because there are so few Christians in Thailand, mm -hmm. and these are coming from hundreds and thousands of villages, we want people to know this is not just happening in their village. It's happening everywhere. So we'll have people from all over the place mm -hmm. come and see this is a movement that's happening all around here in central Thailand. What's, what's the numbers today, Dwight? What's, what's, what's really God What's God Well, since doing? 2017, we have baptized 9,978 people. Wow. Just in Amazing. July and August of this year, we baptized 3,513. Very cool. So uh, very cool, and then the numbers build at two thousand eight hundred. Well, right now we've started two thousand eight hundred seventeen <clears throat> okay. house churches. Now there are some church villages that have more than one, so I, I haven't got the exact number of villages, but it's going to be over two thousand. But that's not including this year. Okay, wow. This year wow. we got we got to add hundreds more. Hey, I want to hear at least one story. So you t you teach people to pray, and uh, and you send them home and you say pray for a week. We're going to come back and see what's God's. In Give us, give us a, an example of someone that's, uh, that's, that, whose life is. So changed. this year, just I have hundreds of thousands of examples, I'm sure, okay? Because we, sure. we did something that's never been done before in Thailand. We reached a complete province for Jesus. That is Can incredible. you imagine? We, the whole province, every village has a house church in every district. So that's the very first time that we did during COVID, by the way. Right. So I'll give you a typical story of somebody. There was one man, Prasert Suk. He was a kind of a deacon of a temple, okay. okay, which a deacon of the temple was. He wasn't a monk, whatever, but he kind of kept the temple clean and okay. finances and things like that. But he was looking for the true God. So he, Buddhist, this is a Buddhist temple. Yeah, a Buddhist temple. Yeah. Yeah. Buddhist temple. And he was looking for the true God because in the Buddhist temple, you're not going to find the true God. You're just going to find a lot of gods. Yeah. With Buddha being the primary one they're going to look sure. for, right? Sure. And uh, he was looking for the true God. And, uh, but he didn't know where to find it until one of our church planners came to visit him. 
And he confessed. He goes, I, my life is miserable because all I do is live for gambling. Wow. He did a lot of cockfighting. You know, you know that's right. big here in Thailand. He did it a is. lot of that and a lot of gambling. And he goes, I just had no peace. I'd, I'd have a lot of happiness if I won, <laughs> of course. But he goes, I had a lot of suffering if I lost. <laughs> okay, those are good Buddhist terms, yes. right? And, uh, but he goes, I just had no joy, no peace in my life. And then when a church planner, one of our AFT church planners came and met him at his house, he was one of the people of peace. We went down this roads and found him. And he said, you know, and told him about Jesus. And he goes, that's the God I'm looking for. Mm. And when he believed in Jesus, the miracle happened mm. was, of course, not only the change in his heart, but it, uh, his gambling addiction just disappeared. Wow. And that's not easy. That's not easy. And it disappeared. And now right away, because of that, he was so full of joy. Within two months, three months, he's actually telling others about Jesus. Wow. And you, you said he actually shared the gospel with someone else. Well, so then he's so excited. He's going around telling. And so I just want to give another story. I was just with him a few weeks ago. And there was another lady that came. And she says, I'm so glad he came to my village. Well, he's in my village. But he came and ter- showed me about Jesus because my, my, my life was miserable. Mm-hmm. She had an issue with bleeding. Mm-hmm. Okay. All her life, it, you know, ever since she was mature, she, mm-hmm. she had a it, bleeding issue. And... Uh, the witch doctors couldn't help her. The doctors, mm. you know, medical doctors, nobody could help her. But when she came to believe in Jesus, so it stopped. That's a familiar story. <laughs> I think familiar I've read story. that somewhere. There you have. But, but this is a real life. Yeah, and so I've yeah. got a video of her as well. So cool. those, those, those are very typical stories I hear. Yeah. Jesus answers prayer. He answers prayer. Yeah. And people who are searching for him. When Jesus answers their prayer, they say, yes, hey, that's the, the God I've been looking for. That is incredible. It is exciting. It, and I'm anxious to see what's going to happen in the future. Uh, Dwight, tell us, how can we pray? Let us know how to pray. Yeah. Wow. We just established our goal. So we have okay. a vision to plant a church in every village, a district church in every district. Every and, village where? In Thailand. In the country. In the country. All 80, seven, eight, well, but it's now 79,000 some right now. Left. Okay. okay. Eight, seven, nine thousand left. Um, so, <clears throat> and we want to start a district church. So next, this year we did Pichit Province. Okay. One province. Done. Done. Good. Next year, Pechibun Nakhonsawan and a little bit of Kongen provinces. Three more provinces. That's incredible. Our goal for next year, Lord willing, is 2,000. 222 villages wow. in one year. Wow. Um, and that's going to clean up. That's going to take care of two more Two provinces, provinces and plus. A, a little more of a big, big province. Okay. And okay. 24 district churches. Okay. That is incredible. And we want to pray for this to happen. We want to pray for God's protection around it and blessing and anointing for this thing to continue. So can you give us a couple of, how can we pray for you? Well, and so, for, so uh, of course, pray for our church planners. Okay. Our church planners are the ones that push through. They, they, they are not ashamed of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they know Thai people are waiting and willing for them. But so they have, they, they give of their life. We don't pay them. Okay. okay. They go and give of their life to do okay. that. And so they, they go, they have their jobs of them, but they go. And but so pray for them. Okay. And uh, that's, that's our biggest prayer. But then, of course, pray for those that come to know Jesus. Mm-hmm. The first three to four weeks are the most vulnerable okay. when somebody comes to know Jesus. Okay. That's what we found, that if they're going to back away, it's during those times. So pray okay. for those, okay. those new believers. And our goal next year is 30,000. 30,000 new believers. Right. Okay. Wow. So, okay, let's pray for the church planters. Wisdom, anointing, blessing on, on their work. Yes. And provision for them. They're doing this voluntarily. They're doing this voluntarily. Pray, pray for the new believers. That, That's right. Uh, in those, especially in those early days. That, those that early the weeks. The Holy Spirit will protect them, would guide them, and draw them. That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and just pray for these plans to be successful. I mean, these are such amazing plans. I'm, I'm so thrilled that this is happening and, pray, and do want our, our viewers to join you and join this movement. Well, thank you, because that, so. that is, it is, uh, I will tell you, I mean, it's in, in the flesh, it's a very uh, intimidating, Yeah. but I've seen God work so many times. Okay. And so we don't make plans, just dreams, you know, the, the, we, we make plans that we really intend to okay. accomplish. Could you, um, we're about, Change the Map is really focusing on prayer, and so we want to be the prayer support for what's going on there, but could you conclude this? With a time of prayer for those those three things, sure. Uh, and uh, and and we'll all join with you and agree with you. And we're going to encourage our listeners to to pray throughout this uh, month for for this movement. 
So okay. Would you pray? Sure. Lord, Heavenly Father, we know you heard that your desire is to reach all of mankind, every village, every person, every creature, as it says in Mark. And Lord, it's not an easy thing to do, to do all that, because so many people are desperately needing to hear of you, and we just need people to go there. And thank you, Lord, that we do have people here in Thailand that are giving of their time, giving of their finances and their time to go and tell and reach that Thai person that's going to die if nobody and not hear of you, Lord, if we don't come hear them. He doesn't get to hear of you, Lord. So I pray that you'd be with our church planners, Lord. Give them courage. Give them strength. Give them help as they go to these thousands of villages, just even next year, Lord, these 2,000, 2,222 villages, Lord. Give them strength. Give them the ability to go do this. Be with their families. Protect them as they go, Lord. And uh, there's hundreds of teams that are involved with that process. And, Lord, I pray you'd be with those new believers that don't even know they're going to hear about you shortly. These thousands, Mm. 30,000 believers, were at, at, at minimum, we're estimating, Lord, as they come to hear about you, Lord. They will hear new things. They'll hear the good news about what you have done, Lord, that you've come to this world to save them. And they're just waiting for you. But, Lord, I pray with you be with those new believers that as they hear of you, Lord, that you protect them, protect them from um, their, you know, jealousy, from their families, from fear, Mm. any number of things that could interfere with their new Mm. faith. But, Lord, I pray that you'd continue to develop them and grow them so they, too, in turn, within within months could become church planners to continue to reach the rest of this country, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray that you would change the map here in Thailand, Lord. And, Lord, go send. And also, Lord, bring other churches that are interested, Lord, that they would join this so that Thai people will come to know Jesus faster and faster and more and more. Lord, as other groups join in with what God is, what you're doing here, Lord. So I pray for that. And, Lord, I pray for change the map here as well, Lord. I pray for the viewers that are watching that, Lord, that you touch their heart. Lord, that you would speak to them, Lord, and how they can join in changing the map, not even just in Thailand, but in the rest of the Buddhist world and in their own world, Lord, in their own location. Lord, I pray that they would change the map to where they're at as well. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Change the Map podcast. For more information, visit www.changethemap.net.